Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs Podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. Well, hello again. It's the Maryland Crabs coming to you from not our kitchen table, but a table in a spare bedroom. This is John Frenet and Tim Hamilton. Hello. How are you today? Dandy. Dandy, you just bought a new washing machine, eh? Uh, I didn't mean to. I uh, I uh, had the, the guy came out and he started giggling when he was looking at it, and I just didn't take that as a good sign. So <laughs> yeah. it's about a thousand bucks. I did, though, manage to split my thumb open this week. I was cutting a pomegranate open for my kids. It went right through my thumb. It you just awesome. want to be. You just want to be like Lindsay Lohan. So we went to uh, that uh, patient first. Yeah. Uh, holy shit! Beside the fact that the guy, the doctor was very nice for being very Mengele esque. But uh, with the injections to the bone, but it was pretty awesome. It did patch me up. They they do a good job. I like actually I like Evolve, um, and they're not a twenty four seven type of clinic. But the um, Doctor Friedman has done really well by me. I never had stitches before. That was um, that was exquisite. Was that, was, that was awful. Yeah. Well, so I've had, I've had my share. My kids have had their share. No hitchhiking for a month. It sucks. But. Uh, but anyhow, I want to thank everybody for uh, listening, for all the downloads. Yeah, we were actually pretty surprised. It's going a lot better than we thought it would. Uh, and it was downloads other than like my mom downloading four or five times, mm-hmm. just to be nice. It's more than that. We've, and we've gotten a lot of feedback, too. We want to thank uh, Sean O'Neill. If you have not listened to episode five, which we uh, which uh, was released last week, definitely go back, download that, and uh, listen to the Robert Eads and the Jessica Packler interviews. Uh, we don't have any guests today. Um, we just thought he's just going to... Um, just be the two of us ramble ramble on but no sean o'neill was great i mean because yeah. there's a guy that knows the business community in annapolis he was the president of the annapolis business association the architect if you will of this merger that is questionable whether it's going to work out between the annapolis business association and the downtown annapolis well it sounds like on paper it seemed like a good idea it was just right. there was a lot of mechanics behind it that that uh, the grants for example and then and then the, the big thing at the very end is like the great opportunity that businesses may have in annapolis which i thought was pretty cool yeah. So if you have not listened to that, definitely go back and listen. And so if, if you have any other suggestions uh, or any comments about what we talked about or any suggestions to some topics, you can shoot us an email at info at com or hit us up on Twitter at MD Crabs Podcast. And uh, we check that pretty frequently. Um, also, why don't you, uh, if you have not yet done so, go to iTunes and subscribe to us. And the best, best way to describe that is like subscribing to a magazine. You subscribe to an issue and, and new issues just get delivered to you automatically right to your phone and while you're there rate us give us a five-star rating and if you're so inclined to type out something just type out something nice and lovely and say that you know bring out a thesaurus what's that break out a thesaurus yeah get creative absolutely and also find us at our facebook page and facebook group for the maryland crabs we have two different places on the uh, uh facebook's that we want to kind of experiment with and see which one is going to be more active and then uh, like we said twitter's twitter's at MD Crabs Podcast, and then uh, email, website, themarylandcrabs.com. And fun, finally, find me on Twitter at uh, Tim Hamilton 47 and John at Ion Annapolis. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. Okay. But see, once we get real big and stuff like that, we won't need to say that, and it's just sort of known. Uh, the big news that we were kind of perusing before we went into this is uh, we're looking at Hakka right now. They just got super spanked. You know, to be... Just very, very subtle about this. Man, they're a hot fucking mess. And just so everyone knows, people are, are reaching right now to hit stop. So, because they thought, oh, another crime thing. We're not going to talk about crime. I swear. This is different. This is just utter malfeasance, incompetence. Incompetence. I mean, we've got plenty of words for this. This is just. It's ridiculous. Uh, the Capitol has a poll, and of course, it's unscientific. Um, but if you go on there, they're, they're, and by the time that you listen to this, the poll's going to be um, finished, but you can look at the results most likely. And they just said, should the city just give this up and have HUD come in and take over? And everyone pretty much is like, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, right now it's at 70% for yes, it's clear there is no leadership in place. Uh, the second one was 16% with no, the board of commissioners can work through its problems. And I then, think it's been proven they cannot. 
I, I, I agree with you there. How many chances do you get? This is, and in all fairness, we've had a rotation of leaders, leadership and uh, the board members. And it like to the point that it's not just embarrassing, it is suspect. And again, I have to point out we're conspiracy guys, blah, blah, blah. But come on, I mean, you don't have this kind of turnover. This is ridiculous. So to go back, we just had the first audit, which said that they'd mismanaged 400 grand. 400 grand. And they miss, miss this spent. one is 4 million. It's 3 million. It's 3 million over a four month period. Oh, three. Wow. So it's, it's, it's horrible. That's more than I make in two years. It's more than I make in a week. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but that's, I mean, how do you, I, I don't think there's been a justification or there's been, uh, you know, I think the mayor has come out and said, well, I'm confident moving forward. I mean, no, th- this is not something, and I'm not putting it on the mayor. I'm, I'm really not. I mean, but no, this is this is not Mike Panaliti's problem. I mean, no. I mean, it is his problem, but it's not his doing. No, um, no, and and I, I don't think it was Josh Cohen's doing, nor do I think it was Alan Moyer's doing. Or I, you know, I don't think you can hang it on there. I think you can look at, and I don't think it's the council, but I will say this is that you know because we've established the last time is that that uh, they appoint members to the board and they, they and they can improve them, uh, or they they. Um, uh, well, they approve them simply, but then after that, they have no power whatsoever. So I can't blame council, but I will say this. When they come in for their quarterly report and they make their reports uh, uh, as to the finances and to the progress, it is received with, with absolute glowing reception where, where it's just they're being beamed at and they're just, uh, for the most part, with some dissenters. But, I mean, there's no hard questions asked. And at this point, we're beyond that. I think it's beyond fixing. Well, one thing that is kind of interesting as I was reading through the audit and the names that were on it and everything else um, is the current acting executive director is um, name comes up an awful lot with that. And I I don't know whether he has anything involved with that or not, but the uh, existing acting director, Walton, who is the one who is... Did you see him stalling while he was looking that up online? He's just uh, the acting director yeah, who's yeah, acting yeah, yeah, click, yeah. click, 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 click. <laughs> that, that was about it. But he's, um, you know, he's he's been there for the... When Vince Leggett left, he was there when Melvin Colbert left. He's been the finance director all along. And then, um, so now it's... Uh, that's the one I think that we need to look into. There's some hard questions that have to be asked at this point. Matter of fact, I mean, I, I, I would say this is almost an emergency meeting of city council where they, I mean, the equivalent of those Senate subcommittee hearings and the congressional... So, I mean, something like that. There has to be some hard questions asked. But then again, can the city actually ask the questions? Sure, they can ask they, them. I mean, they they can get them in forward. They can get them in front of them and they can ask them. And if they refuse to answer, then that looks bad for them. Um, it's the sort of thing where, yeah, th- that's why I had a big problem with when uh, the, the Republicans' uh, congressional committee they had, they brought up, uh, what's her name, Lerner from the IRS. And she took the fifth every time they asked her questions which just made her look really, really bad. And, you know, sure. it's for the same reason is that they couldn't compel her to answer. But the fact that she's not answering was very telling on, on some level or another. I feel the same way with this is get them in front of uh, in front of council and ask some hard questions. I think the taxpayers absolutely have a right to know. The residents have a right to know. And, and council has a right to know. What but, the hell's going on? Yeah. Well, I mean, some of the things that happened with, ha- with Hacker was that it was... Uh, you know, they're giving contracts when they don't have any contracts in place. They're giving contracts to expired contracts. They're giving contracts with the wrong procurement. They're uh, not taking the low bid necessarily. And the executive director, Richard Walton, is sitting there saying that, oh, yeah, well, we, we can prove this. And if they can prove $3 million. Wait, of, they can prove that they're in the right? In the right. That'll then do be, it. Yeah. That'll be fine. But, you know, and, you know, I really hope they can because if they can't, the residents, the 1,100 residents of Hacka are totally screwed. It's 2,000, huh? 2,500? Um, There's 795 units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah 2,000, lo- yeah. You know, um, I was thinking about that, too, when we were, talk- that we were talking about, like, a large hotel, if you think about it. If Hacka is the size of, like, a large hotel, so that's yeah. what they're managing. Yeah. Um, that that's I mean, It's just spread out. That's a, Except a, they don't have a, room service and And they have people shooting at them. <laughs> it's, um, but, yeah, I, so... I don't know, man. I just, I, I just, how many times do you get to screw up before someone in the, in the, the in, in some position of power just goes, you know, get in front of us and tell us what the hell is you, you people doing? Yeah, I mean, what I, what I would do is I would certainly look and find out where this goes back to. This is just an audit for just a little snapshot in time, too. I would turn around and see whether it be HUD, whether it be the state, whether it be the city that comes in, and just say, hey, I, I want the board, hack a board to show me 
what happened in the last two years, the last three years. Let me see how much of this was under Vince Leggett. Let me see how much of this was under Melvin Colbert, who wasn't here very long. Um, the name that keeps coming up is, uh, you know, Richard Walton, who was the finance director as well as the acting executive director. Um, let's go back to when he was hired. Find out what's going on there. Are there any connections? It's it's well, it, they're not they're not beyond reproach, and I know that they they don't answer anyone per se. But there's got to be some accountability, at least outside of a legal pretense. There's got to be some accountability. They owe explanations to people. They can't. It's not a star they, chamber. They owe explanations to everybody that lives. You just in one stepped of their on properties. me using the word star chamber, and I've been waiting to use that for a long time. <laughs> star chamber. Um, yeah, no. I mean, they owe, they owe answers to everybody that lives there. But Mayor Panaliti said he said he has faith in quote the people on the board. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it's not it's not the mayor's fault, but. Why do you have well, faith I, in the people on the board? I, I will give credit to the mayor because he did appoint oh, yeah. Chip Jordan. He did appoint the uh, other gentleman. That yeah, why would you want to walk thing. into that? And now um, the latest guy that he's got up there. So he should have, um, you know, he should have three very, very solid people on the board um, that are his appointees. He'll have a fourth appointee if this guy gets approved. But his first appointee. Was, why, would you want to, why would you want to walk into that board? That's a good question. I mean that's a thankless board. It has no power. It as it's a shit show. I mean even even I, I I could say even in the best of circumstances, but I've never known Haka to to run with any modicum of, of smoothness. Mm. So I, I don't know. It's and it's three million bucks. They got to repay that if they can't document it. I, you know I don't know what that does and, to their. Funding. Well, I, I don't know what their I don't know exactly what their budget is off the top of my head. But I mean if that has to be repaid or a portion of that has to be repaid, you know where it comes out of. It comes out of the carpets that they need to replace in the common areas. It comes out of the maintenance into the. That's pools. I mean these poor people that, that you know they're the ones who are going to suffer because of someone else's and it is incompetence. I, I don't think it's malfeasance. I think it's absolute incompetence. And I mean in the. Um, you know the people that are living there. And not- I am being harsh. I'm being harsh. And pre- this is not me picking them apart. And it, it's, I, I've never seen them even come remotely close to being competent. I would like. I'm, I'm just kind of curious as to why the city hasn't expressed a lot more outrage to this. That's what I mean. Publicly, the alderman, the mayor, the mayor. Oh well, I'm. You know, hey, the board will work through it. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, no, I, I mean, I think there needs to be outrage onto this as opposed to, well, we've got people on the board now. I think we can make it work. I think you need to say, no, what the hell is going on? How did we get from point A to point B? Exactly. Mayor Mike Panellini's responded, quote, I'm disappointed that taxpayer money was mismanaged, unquote. I'm disappointed. Well, I'm you, disappointed it rained yesterday and we didn't get to have the picnic. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you look at some of the other scandals in Annapolis back when uh, Josh Cohen was mayor. You had an, a longtime employee of the finance office stole 140 grand. Well, they got arrested for that, though. No, they oh, did no, not. Oh, no, wait, they did not. No, they did not. They declined to press charges because it was a long-term employee. They asked for the resignation. She was able to retain her um, pension, her retirement, which, I mean, in, in fairness, she paid into. Yeah, um, no, I agree. You know, so I, you know, but, but still, this was a—and and they did get most of the money back. Because most of it was checks. I mean, so this was obviously most a stupid. Of it. This was a stupid person in the finance department. Oh, let's steal a bunch of checks made to the city of Annapolis. I'm sure my bank will take care of them. Um, you know, and and then you then you look and I, and I I will stick by him. But you look at poor Flip Walters, uh, the harbor master. Oh yeah. It was termed, there was twenty five hundred bucks, I think, or maybe thirty five hundred bucks that came up short in the harbor master's office, and. It was due to an assistant harbor master there, and he did not report it in time. And he was trying to figure out, and I don't know whether he was looking to give the guy a break to pay it back. Or, you yeah, know, I don't. Was, I don't know what the deal was. It was stupid, but I probably might have done the same thing. To be honest with you, you know, I mean, it's a guy that you work with. You're a small department. It's just, you know, I, I mean, I I understand where he's coming from. Uh, I understand that it was wrong, but I mean, you know, where's okay? Well, we're talking. It's a big accountability problem. Well, it is, but I mean, you, okay, across so, the board. Yeah, so I mean, here, here's the somebody steals 140 grand and. She, they say, okay, yeah, retire and, you know, we'll let it go. You know, Flip doesn't steal that, gets canned. And Hacka apparently now is misusing $3 million and the mayor's disappointed. And they're declining to comment. Um, multiple resignations, stalled redevelopment of Newtown 20, multiple high-profile criminal incidents that put the housing authority in the spotlight. Um, I'm reading this from the Capitol article. Uh, how does the are the inspections going through? 
That, they're all done. Are they all done? They're all done. They've they've gone in. They've did they end up it. paying for that, or was it were the inspections waived? Um, I think there was a. I think they they did pay some of it, but I think they negotiated some of the pricing. Yeah, on I think it, it's fair. Do that. And, and and let's be honest. I I've seen these inspections. It's and, and again, I will say that I have not seen the inside of some of the hacker units, but the inspections aren't that much. I mean, they come in, they poke the fire detectors, and if they go beep, you know, they move on. They put a little plug in the GFI. If that turns off, they look. They see if the toilet or if the sinks run, and off they go. Is are there four wheels and, or four walls and a roof? Um, and off, off they go. Uh, so it's not a, it's not a huge, huge, you know, roof to basement inspection. Right. Uh, but again, if you've got issues, then the, you'd be delving a little bit deeper. You know, so if you've we, got mold or something like that. that so there's nothing that the that the residents, there's nothing the citizens, there's nothing that the council can do until the investigation is. Well, I guess they have to respond to the investigation. Is what I mean. That's what. Hacker has to do is that they 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 made a response basically saying, well, we have paperwork to prove that some of this is, is and, done. and they're they're gonna they're gonna lay their case out and HUD will turn around and look at it and make a decision ultimately as to what to do. So uh, worst case scenario, they have to pay back the three million, right? And and that right, likely would be tied up in some kind of court somewhere. Um, um, Hacker would uh, they'd be stupid not to, you can, know, appeal that. Can well probably not. Board members generally can't be held responsible, right? They're they're covered under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, they're they're covered under uh, insurance for that. I'm sure. Hopefully, you know, Alan Hyatt is the uh, the attorney for Hacka, and he's he's a sharp cookie. So I'm yeah. sure he's there. They've got their. Uh, you know, is that officers. pro bono? I don't know. Hmm. Um, I know I know they have. Legal, I know that it should be. I mean, that's, I know yeah, that make... they have legal expenses as a budget item and they have spent legal expenses whether that's to hide it or not i don't oh, know oh gotcha i mean it could be court fees to do evictions i don't mm-hmm. you know I don't, I don't know specifically what that what that was well i just i feel like the city has all the responsibility of public housing and no control over it that's all you do is you appoint people who you think will do a good job and then you pretty much it's like sending your kid off to college you know you hope they do what they're supposed to do and hope but but ultimately you'd never hear from them and you don't know what's going on and if they screw up, they have excuses. Right. I, I just and that's where I I am being harsh on them because I think you know they've been given chance after chance after chance, and and I really think that they uh, there's been no accountability. I think that uh, frankly the mayor should be outraged. I mean he should be displaying outrage. This is outrageous. No, and you know who else should be displaying outrage? And I'll, I'll throw this back on the residents there. They they should be in city council. Yeah. Um, and honestly, if, if if no matter how you feel about about public housing, no yeah. whether you feel like you know. Whether you think that people are deserve public housing or it should be raised or anything, this it is what it is, and we you know we own it right now. Despite you know we own the problem, so no matter how no matter how you feel about it, you should be outraged by this on behalf of the of the residents. You should I mean if if you don't have anything to do or any any cares about public housing, it's your tax money that is funding this. And let me this say waste. this too. This is, and I'm not going. I'm, I will say this: I'm not liberal. You know, I'm, I'm really not. I like to think that I can I can see the the sides of any situation. I will say this for the people who talk about pu- people who live in pu- public housing, the whole myth that they're that they're sponging off the general public that they're that they're not pulling the way. I will just say you live a shit life in public housing. So for better or for worse, whether you choose to work or you're, you're you're lazy or whatever people think, it's not like you're living a luxury life. It it's public housing sucks. Best yeah. case scenario, it sucks, and and you may have adapted to it. Yeah, because that's all you know. So and, and I'm not making excuses better. for people who are in public housing. I agree with uh, Mr. Eads that it should be a stepping stone out. You know, you can you can be conservative and argue against it about making making contributions to society. You can make all those arguments, but at the end of the day, just realize they live pretty shitty lives in these places. You know, so. The fact now is their lives are going to be a lot shittier because they don't have any. They're going to be short, of, most likely, on funds to cover things like carpeting and um, repainting, basic, basic or repairs, mold remediation, or something. Exactly. Like that. It's just uh, it's abhorrent. And and to be honest with you, I, I think if you know any of our listeners that do live in public housing, I think that you know rally the rally the troops, get them into city council, and say you know on Monday and say, hey, what the hell are you guys going to do about this? Well, I think. Well, that brings us to the other subject. When we talk about city, city function. Like this, there's a this is a point where I think the city has to be more aggressive. And I'm not saying it's not their fault; it's the way it's set up. But on the other side, you have the city overreach. Like we talked with <laughs> Sean last week, which was the um, the down the business and the red tape and the permitting. Mm-hmm. But um, the HPC, 
Right, Historic Preservation Commission. But, yeah, um, so while we're recording this, uh, and so I know it probably hasn't changed by the time you'll be listening to it, but uh, if you don't know, Gavin Buckley, who has the uh, who owns Metropolitan and Lemongrass and, and Tsunami, Tsunami and Sailor Oyster Bar. Right. So, oh, I know. Mayoral know. candidate. And mayoral candidate. We're going to get him in here, definite. Um, but he is being sued by the, by the HPC, um, which is, I guess, quasi government. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's an appointment. It's, I don't know if they get any funds, but. Uh, well, they've got a. Matter of uh, fact, why don't you explain the whole thing to me? I know enough. Well, he's being sued because he has a huge mural on the side. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the HPC is contending that he is in the historic district, so he should have gotten permission to do this. And he said, not so fast. You can talk about kinds of paint or you can talk about, but you can't control the artwork. So break down the HPC for for Um, me. Basically, HPC is a volunteer board, Historic Preservation Commission. It's headed by Lisa Kennedy, who is Alderman Ward 1, Joe Budge's wife. Mm -hmm. Um, and there is a and Ward One is is history. right right in the heart where this is all right. all happening. And the fact that Joe Budge serves and votes and everything else when his wife is in charge of that is, uh, well, you know, they, they swear there's no conflict of interest. Well, no, I it's, di- a, I it's a tough position, that. you know. Um, and then you've got a, a city staffer, Lisa Craig, who is director of historic preservation for the city. Oh, so she's employed by the city. So she is employed by the city, and she is the one. See, I always thought that was a volunteer. No, know. she is tasked with enforcing the codes that the commission has come up with, and they've codified and whatnot. And what happened is last fall, she had said that we choose not to regulate paint. She so, said that, or she choose wait. So that the, the, the commission chooses not to regulate paint, which makes sense when you look at. Um, but how, who comes? All right, so she says that. Who comes up with these rules? That, that's the Historic Preservation Commission. That would be so Lisa, the, Lisa Kennedy and the commission. So the commission said that they're not going to regulate paint. Or, Correct. And they came through through Lisa Craig, which makes sense when you look at Mission Escape Rooms, which is painted that day glow green. Mm-hmm. Um, and for a while, some people were like, oh, my gosh, what's that? You know, uh, and what happened is the, you did that, didn't you? Did that? Yeah, I mission? did. It was really cool. Is it cool? Yeah, it was cool. I failed. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that's when you get lost in your apartment. Could, couldn't get out of the damn room. You should see me trying to get out of my car in the morning when I go to R and R. It's horrible. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what happened is Gavin tsunami the, the facade of tsunami had some peeling paint, and they got a citation saying, "Hey, dude, your your paint's peeling. Paint it." And he said, "Okay, well, this would be cool. What we're going to do is we're going to talk to Jeff Huntington, who's a great muralist in town, and we're going to do something fun on it." Didn't um, wasn't he on the Annapolis podcast? Yes. Yeah. Yep. That was a good one. Yep, it was. Um, so what they did is they brought it out. It was on the very first Sunday. Arts Festival of 2015. Right. And they brought the cherry picker out there and he got all of his paint and he painted this whole thing in one day and it was just like oh, really it's cool. cool. Uh, and and I told Jeff to his face that I, I think the painting is, is absolutely horrendous. I don't like it personally. <laughs> I'm not going to hang it over my so lip. That's called a compliment sandwich. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, it is. But I mean, I totally think it is so cool. The thing that's funny about it though is if you painted a, you know, a pair of Sperry's and a sailboat and a Labrador, nobody would have said anything. Um, <laughs> But it's just it's just a dark kale. It, yeah, I mean it's a dark picture. It it really is, and there's no two ways around that. He doesn't apologize for that. It's a beautiful piece of artwork. It's not to my taste. That's fine. Um, a lot of his other stuff is, um, but now all of a sudden the Historic Preservation Commission says, "Hey, you know, we don't like that," and now they want to regulate the paint. Mm-hmm. So they, but they already said that they they weren't going to. They they said they weren't going to, but now they're claiming because it's a mural, it is actually a change of it's a change. But it's a material change as opposed to a color change. You can make the argument that, no, it's just a bunch of different shades of color. That happen to be in an exact order. <laughs> in an exact order. Um, so that that's where it stands. And what happened is the Gavin and Jody, who own Tsunami, decided that they weren't going to pull this down. And they, they, they said that the city has does not regulate paint. They don't have any overreach over this. And it should stay. And they forced the city to turn around and sue them. Where does the art district fall into this? The art district is, I mean, they're obviously in support of it. And the art district sort of blends and overlaps into historic work. See, that, I thought that, that that extended into uh, where Tsunami is now. So I thought that that maybe that they would fall under the art district and, and HPC doesn't have. Now, the Historic Preservation Commission actually goes up to the kind of like the Lowe's-ish okay. um, out on West Street. I know um, Metropolitan is not. The Lowe's is not, but if you go a little bit in or, in or West Street from the Lowe's, that is um, mm-hmm. still considered the Historic Preservation Commission. So, um, 
So that's that's where we were. What happened is they had a uh, hearing on Tuesday, right. and on on this, and it was supposed to go on the judge for some reason. And I imagine that the city probably asked for a postponement, postponed it uh, till the end of. I think in November. To be I thought I thought that um, Gavin's legal well, team well, to what drop. happened when the postponement came? Then Gavin's attorney filed a motion for dismissal, and that's um, Gormley is his attorney, and then they filed for a motion of dismissal to which is standard, right? That's just, yeah, and and quite honestly, I think it may work. I mm-hmm. mean, the judge may turn around and look and say, hey, you know, they don't have any, you know. We post. I posted this on Reddit. I posted the Capitol article about this on Reddit, and I got lit up because Reddit. I look. I love Reddit, but sometimes the commenters are too cool for the room, and right. They're all over going, this isn't news. This is standard procedure, what you do. I'm like, yeah, but it's still pretty important. I mean, because this is, he's drawing a line in the sand. This is this is bigger than Gavin. Well, he really has. I mean, and, and there's, there's a couple different undercurrents going there. He is running for mayor. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we look at that. I mean, he'd be a huge advocate for the arts. You look at the recent Fringe Festival, and he had his fingerprints all over that, which was a wonderful success the, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, the Chocolate Festival, and that's not the name of it, but it's coming in. Later on this year, and and something we'll talk about later on is uh, he's one of the people who's putting on the ignite. Yes, I mean, yeah. So uh, and, and and he's been around. I mean, he's run a number of businesses, a number of successful businesses. He's very, well well liked. He's very much well like, respected. You know, very much like Harvey Blonder or Mike Ashford or any number. Brian Bolter, mm-hmm. the Fox Brothers. These these are the people that own businesses, yeah. plural, and know how to run them. And they know how to make a, they know how to make a profit in Annapolis. So uh, he's he certainly got something to say there. It'll be interesting to see how this um, folds out. I guess my problem with the commission, and you and I have talked about this a lot, is that I think if you if you ever go to the Chop House up in Parole, I don't know if it's still there. Is it still there? Yeah. So when you, it's on the second floor, this is the Chop House up in Parole Town Center. When you go upstairs, they've got the best collection of pictures I've seen of historic Annapolis. So when mm-hmm. I talk historic Annapolis, I'm talking early to mid 1900s so probably to the 1960s right and it's unrecognizable when you go down today well the so one, you've said it a number of times that the people in ward one want to live in this town that never existed no no if you look at those pictures you see the as a matter of fact i, I was listening to the uh the, the annapolis podcast interview with uh, mr ralph crosby, ralph crosby. oh my gosh a great one yeah but, hey time out go listen to that one the annapolis podcast the one with ralph crosby he talks about his book uh, growing up in town, yeah. how it's changed. Fascinating. But he's he's talking that it was like till the uh, like early 1990s that you had the overhead wires going down Main Street. Um, and if you look at those pictures, they were all, he said there's grocery store. he said there was something like 10 grocery stores downtown um, and butcher shops. And if you look at the pictures, it was it was a, a proper downtown that looked, it looked very industrial in fact, it looked nothing like this quaint waterside town that not only we have today, but everyone says it's always been this way. It hasn't been this no. way. As a matter of fact, if you look at the harbor probably back in the 1800s, it was a shithole because that's where the poor people lived. That's where the industry was. I mean, the, you, you could probably, there's the, the harbor was probably filled with trash and garbage. And of course, I like the way it is now. I'm not going to be like a New Yorker who, who laments losing the grittiness of Times Square. Well, I know that when I first came down here, I, I took one of those tours, uh, one of the watermark tours out on the boats around the, up and down Spot Creek. And they told me that back in the colonial days that the wealthy lived up top. Right. The, the prol, the the poor people lived down close to the water. So waterfront property wasn't the place to be. No, it never was because they had no indoor plumbing. And what happened is that the wealthy, they would take their their shit buckets, throw it out into the curb, and when rain would come down, it would you know take it down the street and off into the creek it would go. Yeah. So I mean the way the way we're living right now is is topsy turvy. Like probably in the last fifty or sixty years before that, if you had a Davidsonville. And you see spectacular homes out there. They're as far away from the water as they could possibly be because the water. I mean, we like to think that you know, that the, the waters today are much dirtier and filthier. They're actually a lot better than they were. So I guess my point is, if you look at the way Annapolis is right now, it's great and I love it and it's charming. But it's I don't think this Annapolis ever existed. So I think what you have HBC doing is that they, they, I feel the same way about about Trump. You know, make America great again. I think Trump, and I'm not making a political statement here, but I will say that Trump and his supporters, they're yearning for that Norman Rockwell, Maryland, uh, Maryland or, or United States that never existed. That Norman Rockwell was an idealization of what he wanted, what people, it's the, it's what the school kids learn. It's not the actual, that's not how it was. So they want this 1950s world that never existed. 
tugging at the heartstrings. Exactly. You know, who wouldn't want to live in the Leave It to Beaver? Of course you would, but it never Leave It to Beaver right. never existed. Right. It, it just a, didn't. It was a TV show. Yeah, so I, I feel the same way about uh, Annapolis. Is if you want to preserve a standard of living to make our town uh, walkable and livable and charming and all that, I'm all for it. But when you're hiding behind uh, an Annapolis, I don't think mean hiding behind, but when you're promoting uh, and making people's lives tougher, for, you know, if you don't have, uh, you have synthetic columns, you know, and, and right. I'm the same way as, you know, I like authenticity. You know, my house, I'd rather have the, the hardwood floors rather than the, the press stuff. Uh, Just Prego or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, it, call me a snot because I am. But I mean, so I get what they're trying to do. But at the same time, sometimes it seems like they're so overboard that people are tearing their, their hair out. Don't say it's not historically accurate. Um, because, I mean... Neither were, were traffic lights, and we've got those, you know. The, Indoor plumbing, yeah, exactly. electricity. So, I mean, I just where, do, has, where do you stop it? I think there has to be some flexibility, and I, I understand you have to have the yin and the yang. You have to have the, the people who are going to push the limits. And then I think you have the HPC who are always going to make it difficult for them because if they start giving in and compromising, then, you know, all of a sudden you're going to see the edges kind of start to slip a little bit. But, right. but I don't know if, if you go to Frederick – or Easton, or St. Michael's. St. Michael's. I don't know if they have similar organizations. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't know if they have similar organ, uh, regulations. Yeah. But they seem to, to maintain their charm beautifully. I mean, I, I certainly think there's a need to preserve buildings. Yeah, I do too. Um, to preserve, you know, perhaps some sidewalks and whatnot, but to preserve a lifestyle is, and, and that's where I think they're kind of overreaching. I mean, for example, window, I, I'm, I'm saying, I. I'm not lecturing because I don't know the rules because I don't live downtown. But you know, if you want if you want some some windows that all of a sudden would would, would save you thousands of dollars a year in heat double, double pane so, double pane vinyl clad windows, right? Which look exactly like what you're taking right. out. Are you allowed wooden. to do that? No. Or is it? Yeah. See that that, no. that that to me all of a sudden, you know, for a liberal town that you know that you're talking about. Uh, and wasting energy and not making things energy efficient. It just seems kind of silly to me at that point. Well, the whole thing is kind of amusing about the whole mural thing with uh, Tsunami is that if you look at the side of Hats in the Belfry, I believe it is, right down at the foot of Main Street. Oh, is that the tobacco? Or no. It's, I think it's chewing gum, maybe? Oh, no. It's, it's, shoe, a, it's like shoe polish, maybe. It could be. It's got a big mural on the side Which is of it. great. And I believe Stevens, which is now the Mission Barbecue, also had a big mural on the Randall and, Street, but those side. are historic murals. I think we got to point out that they, they no, but I mean, well, that, when, when does it, when does history reinvent itself? When, yeah, true. You know, what you know is the tsunami mural now going to be an historic mural fifty years from now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's, I mean, it's not. It's probably not done. You know, it's probably think, not I haven't heard anyone who's who's been upset about it. I mean, that's anecdotal. I mean, but I've not heard like I read the uh, the Capitol comments. The, the, I don't know if you've gone to the com- comment section of the Capitol, um, which. Uh, that's, that's a stupid a, move, but that's... <laughs> I know. I, I get sucked into that. It is just a pool of negativity and nastiness and just... But yeah. um, I mean, there are a couple of people that are pissed off about it. And they and, and I think they're more pissed off that Gavin didn't disclose his intentions prior to. And he just took it upon himself to do it. And that wasn't the way things are done. And that's fine. Good know. for him, though. I, I, I think he's making... I, I don't know if he meant to make a statement, um, but he is. Um and now he's sticking on, sticking with it. Uh, well, you have to at that point because, it, for, I mean, I don't think it would cost him much to do, but there is a principle involved at this point. It'll mm-hmm. be interesting, though. I mean, he's running for, I mean, now I'm, I'm really extrapolating, but he's running for mayor and he's got a good shot at it, like as it is today. If, right. you, if you, you know, things could change over the next few weeks and months because our election's not for another year. You know, it's it's so funny. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide off to another topic because uh, the, the mayor is a, acutely aware that Gavin is running. Gavin actually went into his office and sat down with him and said, hey. And he said, oi, Mike. <laughs> well, you know, I can't do the Aussie accent, but, you know, he's like. He brought hey. his shrimp and his bobby. Yeah, yeah. He said, and said his I'm, Foster's lager. He said, I'm, I'm running against you, mate. You know, have yeah. at it. Yeah, well, I mean, um, it's, it's going to be good. But the mayor is acutely aware of a re-election campaign. I mean, he's obviously, he's raised 120 some odd thousand well, dollars already. Back. He's yeah. got some cash. I don't think cash wins this race. No, I don't think so either. Uh, alone. I mean, you, obviously, you do need some cash, but not a lot. Just take what happened last week, and actually, it's just happening, you know, this week. But it'll be by the time you hear this, it'll be last week. The city with the boat shows when they came into town, the city immediately goes to what they call event pricing in the garages. Oh, yeah. 
So, yeah, so we're, we're, we're in the middle of the sailboat show right now as we do this. And like I guess that hurricane that they were predicting is going to veer off unless you're listening to this next week. What are you talking about? Right, we were under 20 right, feet right. of water. So we're taking a risk <laughs> doing that. But, um, you know, in downtown is typically hell for locals when it comes to uh, the boat show. Sure. I, I think uh, St. Mary's is closed. The school, is it? Are they, are they off for a couple of days? I don't know. I think they are. But um, but it's a sacrifice you make. I think it's supposed to be good for businesses, although I've heard some grumbles. I I, I don't know if it is or not. I'm you know, at- I spoke with a number of people last year, and it's good for the businesses below Conduit Street. Right. And what what they say is that people because businesses are restaurants, businesses in general. Okay. Um, most people go up to Conduit Street. They won't go up to the top of Main Street, and they turn around at Conduit and come back down. And the reason is is because the boat show has done such a good job of moving people that want to leave or come. They've got their buses and their shuttles and stuff like that to do it, but it meets down there at the city dock as opposed to up at the top of Main Street. So there's no reason for people to walk too much further up. Yeah, it's a pain, but I think I like the boat shows. I'm not going to lie. I've never been to the sailboat show, but Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I like the concept of it. I like that it brings people here. So I mean, I like it. I mean, yeah, it's a pain. Um, yeah, you know, Navy football games are a pain too. Yeah. So it's commissioning. I mean, yeah. But the but, but the event pricing that was so well, that was supposed to be this. This is what the what the city came up with this idea is for special events, and they do it like for the Fourth of July and you know, New Year's Eve and boat shows and I think probably commissioning week. Um, they take the garages and instead of paying the two bucks an hour to park, whatever they say, okay, four bucks is it? I, whatever it is. Uh, I use resident coupons to Best. do it, but. Um, but yeah, so what they did, they said Hillman Garage, which is down on Main Street, is going to cost you 40 bucks to park, flat fee, whether you stay two minutes or 24 hours. So they're on the Uber from a event plan yeah. sort of thing. Uh, for Gott's Court, it was 20 bucks. I think it may have been 35. 35 and 25, 20 or 25. And then it was like 15 at Knighton, which is behind Tsunami and Lemon, or not Tsunami, uh, Lemongrass and Metropolitan. Right. Regardless of whether you stayed, uh, you know, 10 minutes or however long. And there was a big pushback this year uh, because they've doubled the rates. Right. Uh, parking elsewhere. They've doubled the rates of fines in residential areas. The boat show takes 90% of the metered parking down at City Dock. So then it was a, uh, you know, the, there was a big pushback. And the mayor, mayor listened to his credit. But I think, I, think it's, I think it's a political move to do. I guess so. I think, you know, I, I'm outraged in principle. Because I have a strong sense of fairness, which is makes makes my life very difficult. But um, in all honesty, I don't think many locals go down these two weeks. There's just, I, you know, I, I had, there was this, a local restaurant a couple of years ago. I'm not going to mention because I was pretty feisty about it. But they had a they had a special, the $5 lunch special. And during the boat show week, they jumped to 10 bucks. Yeah, I know. Oh, that they, was Manja, wasn't it? I don't know who it was. But they, <laughs> there, was, there was a big kerfuffle about it. But, I mean, it was... Uh, for me, I just as a local, I was really ticked off, you know. And I understand why they do it; they have a right to make a buck. But, you know, as a local, I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I'm here all the time. I'm supporting you in the winter when when business is, is lousy. So, can you not cut the locals a break? You know, right. just make our life a little bit easier. But well, just to give you an idea on that that pricing, though, there was a, a mutual friend of ours that she had planned to go to Mission Escape Rooms. She had rented out two rooms for her son's birthday for a birthday party for an hour. And now you've got to park in the garage. Now all of a sudden it's... Oh, yeah. See, I didn't think and, about that. Yeah, you're hosed if you're above... Yeah, if you're above conduit, you are going to be get. I mean, especially if you're not a restaurant, you are going to feel the effects of that. Although I think the city backed off, though, didn't they? And they did. They backed off now. So what happens is they've got the flat, flat fee pricing, the event pricing, which will be at Hillman. Yeah. Through the boat show this weekend, which is the power boat show. Uh, the other garages will be as standard. Okay, I think that's fair. And that is. I, I think, you know, it's it's funny. It's... If you go to any town, the hotel tax and the rental car tax and, you know, all these taxes which are designed to hit visitors because they're going to pay it. Sure, they'll be annoyed, but who cares because they're not voting. So you always want to soak the outsiders. And, and we do that, too, I think, with the hotel stuff. And that was the big um, discussion um, when it came down to uh, Airbnb where they weren't paying. They, they, were, they said they weren't paying their fair share. But I think, okay, if you want to soak the outsiders – for the boat show, yeah, pick a garage that they would go to and sure, have at it, I guess. So I get that. I think just right now with the parking with um, SP Plus coming in, that everyone's a little bit on edge because it's all being still being worked out. Um, That'll be interesting to look at this thing. And, and and that would be something that would be a real good issue for 
Gavin to bring on, bring Mike on. I mean, obviously Mike's got to keep Crystal Spring at bay. Um, I'm, got- I'm annoyed by SP Plus, and here's why. And this is this is my X to grind. Is there's a few things, and I I know they just came on a few months ago, but there's been enough time there where I think they can work the, these issues out. Um, the first of which is people don't know how to use it. So when you come in, when you fight, when you park. I, I've seen this a zillion times where people walk over to the machine and they found out that they need their license plate. So they walk back to their car to get their license plate number. And they go back to the machine and it takes them forever to get through the, the, the process. Then they get their ticket and then they go put it on their dash because that's what they're used to doing. Because they, they, they don't know that they don't have to do that. There's no signage when you come in, no one telling you what to do. And they're supposed to be parking ambassadors that I never saw. Nope. And the other part, which pisses me off, is because they have a parking app which would be great, is that you know you come in, you can pay to the app, you don't have to do anything, even though they doubled the prices, which is annoying. You pay with the app, not for the app. You, yeah, you pay yeah. with the app, but you pay a 45 cent fee every time you use the app. So let's say you go and you park for an hour, so that's costing you $2, or no, $4, right? Am I right? I don't want to say something wrong and have someone I, yeah, bitch at me. What, whatever the initial thing is, plus 45 right, whatever cents. Whatever it costs you to park, plus 45 cents. So let's say after an hour you say, oh, you know what, I'm running over. It's very convenient. You can stand at, you know, wherever you are at, at Mission Barbecue or at, or at Pip's Hot Dogs, and, and you can right then extend. Hit, extend. But then it costs you another 45 cents. So you've essentially paid a dollar over what you would, would normally pay. So let's say you go downtown four times a week. Let's just say once a week. That's, that's 45. That's about $2 a week almost. Let's just call it right. $2 a week. So right. 52 so weeks, you're 100, spending that's 100 bucks a year. $100 a year for the privilege of paying. That's obscene to me. And... Yes. I will say that Annapolis has the highest rate that I found on their website. Even Bethesda is, I think, 40 cents or even 35 cents. For a brief period, Annapolis was the highest in the country. And we brought it up actually on R&R. We brought it up to them. And then later on that afternoon, they upped the rates in D.C. So so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we, so you screwed the people in D.C. They didn't go the other D, way D, on D, it. DC and, D.C. and Annapolis are the highest rates for uh, That's the, nuts, the, though. the parking I mean, I just I, I find that... So I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't. I, I know it's a small thing, and people are rolling their eyes because it's just me being outraged again. It's not a small thing. I, I just so I, I don't go downtown that often. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Not because of that, but because parking. You can always find parking. If I can find parking on the street, I get parking on the street because I know as local, I know all the places to go. But I just I don't like the you know Josh doubled the the, the meters you right. know. And then Mike doubled the meters, you know, so effectively again, for certain. Yeah, instances. right. So uh, I and now you have a fee on top of that. I'm not I'm not happy with this. Well, it'll be and I know they have to iron some stuff out and no one's going to be happy paying for parking. But um, well, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how this contract reconciles at the end of the year, because they've got incentives for amount of revenue they've collected and so on and so forth. Uh, Alderman Budge had put out onto his Facebook page that SP Plus is reporting that in the month of September, they did 250% more than the month of September last year. Is that, that just, that's not including fines? And, and no, I, and that was that they, they're ticketing and they're fining. Oh, so it's everything all together. So, so it's everything all together. Now, mind you, that was not including October, which is when all of the fines doubled. Right. So if you overstay your welcome at a meter, it used to be 20 bucks. Right. Now it's 40. Uh, first time. In a meter. Meters are always going to be 40 bucks. Okay. In residential parking. Oh. Okay. If you're parked in a residential area. Oh, that's when the fines increase. Okay. The first fine is 40. The second one, I believe, goes to 70. The next one goes to like 120. And then I think it caps out. Well, that's where you lose Ward 1 residents because they're all for this because they, uh, because all of a sudden, despite the fact that they live downtown, people started parking there. Much right. To their astonishment. And yeah. people are going to park in the downtown area. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's after they're done peeing in their front yards. So they I park guess, in front of their but, house. So um, I don't know. I mean, I, I really town park. I didn't I didn't have that problem with them. They seemed OK to me. You know, I, I never I mean, I don't think I think it's like your cable company or your electric company. You're never going to be thrilled with whoever's charging you money for something that's relatively basic. Yeah. But um, I don't know. So, I mean, I know they're still working some stuff out. Matter of fact, I saw um, well, I, I think uh, Alderman Littman has a uh, proposal in or he's working on some legislation now modeled after what happens in other cities. About paying your fines in to the lighthouse shelter, I think, for and, and food. food goods, right? I mean, it's feel good. I like it. I mean, I, I know there's going to be some pushback with implementation, and yeah, there is. I mean, we you know, did the math. We figured out like for a forty dollar ticket for an overstayed meter, that's like you know ninety pounds of potatoes or something. I would do that out of spite, though. I totally would do that. I would go out of my way to go to the store to buy potatoes to bring in, just so 
that I didn't have to pay a freaking fine. Oh, yeah. I, I would, I would too. I mean, there's so many things that they could do for that, and I think this is a great program. Whether it be donating food or perhaps maybe just giving the option during a period of time when there is such a need in the homeless shelters, yeah, the lighthouse to be able to make the check payable to lighthouse as opposed to the city of Annapolis. Do you think they could have, around Christmas they always shut down the meters? Is they you, do. Are they going to do that again this year? Think? Um, presumably they did it last year, and, and they've done it. Mayor that's always been a real nice thing. I've always yeah. liked that. Yeah, um, and that's uh, and actually, I believe the I believe the uh, downtown Annapolis partnership um, or downtown Main Street's partnership gets a, a sponsor that, that covers the cost of that because the city doesn't do it for free. I wonder who's going to handle Midnight Madness this year. Um, ac- actually, the uh, downtown Annapolis partnership is. I just got an email from uh, Royal Bundy, who's the vice or uh, I think she's the vice president of Ramshead now, um, and I haven't read it yet, but she's it's this Midnight Madness stuff. Yeah, well, that's, that's always so, uh, Judy Buttonstick always did a killer job with that. I know there was a lot of people mm-hmm. involved, but Judy's been doing it for as long yeah, oh, as I know. Oh, shout out to Judy. And I finally got her off my ass because of our very first podcast, remember, we said we were going to give away a gift card for... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's been hounding me for like weeks. <laughs> and I finally remembered to bring it in this morning. You know morning. you're a liar head. I mean, you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. I brought it in this morning. I put it on her desk and I said, here, get off my ass. Yeah, well, she does a good job <laughs> with Midnight Madness. But uh, that's that's about... I don't go downtown that much anymore. I stick into my forest drive... Uh, Quarter stuff. Although, <laughs> with drive. the shutdowns, Forest Drive. They had another one last. Uh, they had two, they had two last oh. week. One, the car was on fire. Yep, on fire. How does that happen? And then one, the bus was hit like yeah. head on. You and I were arguing about right that. there by the firehouse up on uh, almost near Chinkapin Road, right? Byberry Road. I don't uh, think there's any solution. I, I hate it. I don't know if there's any solution to it. I mean, the mayor said in a meeting once, someone asked, do you have a contingency plan? For Bullshit. And he no. said, he said yes. He no. nodded. And yeah. I'd love to see it. No, no. I, 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 I would like to see David Mandel, who's the Office of Emergency Management or Chief Simmons. I would like to see a book. I want to see a document. And I've never been able to see that. I mean, there should, this should be the simplest thing in the world. You know where your main arteries are. You know where your choke points are. So when Forest Drive gets shut down, no matter where it is, you know you need to deploy cops, reserve cops, public works, fire department. Yeah. To move traffic through. Well, well I think it, because if Annapolis shuts, or if Forest Drive shuts down, that's the whole city and onto 50 and 97. Yeah. No, no, it, it is. It's ridiculous. I think, and I, I saw an incident back in May. Yeah, it was the middle of May because um, I was waiting for someone for my son's graduation from middle school or from uh, elementary school. And uh, there was pedestrians crossing the middle of the road, as they do, um, over to the McDonald's at the far end of Forest Drive. And the, the little girl got clipped and she was fine. I mean, it was, I think she just, it was, it was, she got tapped and I'm not minimizing that, but I was at the front. I saw the whole thing and I saw the police shut down Forest Drive inbound. Uh, and I guess, yeah, I guess it was inbound. They shut it down for the better part of an hour. There was no reason to, I was right there. I saw that, that there was no reason to do it. I just think that they're very blase about shutting down Forest Drive. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. And I think as a resident, you have to realize that we live on a peninsula there's even with you know you could you have spa, hilltop, um, you know uh, spa hilltop forest. You have Bay Ridge. Yeah, so there's not there's not a whole lot you can you can do. No, but. there's not. But there's there's a lot of ways you can mitigate that, and the city does not do it well. I, the other day, okay, no. when when they had that bus accident up there, it, I I don't live that far from the rec center. It took me 45 minutes to get to the Pitmore Rec Center from my house. Okay, it's less than two miles, mm. uh, which is just absolutely absurd. There was no tra- no no officers directing traffic at any of the lights. I mean, you certainly look at you know why why do we need to give Hillsmere Drive at five o'clock in the afternoon the outbound green light? Yeah, I mean, there's very little traffic coming out of Hillsmere at that point. Most of the traffic is going into Hillsmere. I think it's. It's a lack. Of, I think you, you have so much kicking the can down the road. Just not not just Annapolis. I'm not picking on Annapolis. You get that in most government, and that's the problem that most Americans have is that you look at these issues and they just get ignored. But this is a problem that you have. Forest Drive, and they're looking at that. What is that? Parkside Preserve. Yes. That's so. I mean, if you are if you if you are pushing to have uh, Crystal Springs built and these other developments built, um, which according to the traffic. A study that I saw three or four years ago would be catastrophic, and you and I disagree on it. But, um, and I'm, I'm not I'm not anti development. I'm not. But I mean, 
you have to have some plans to go along with this. I, I, I want to see, we want, we're going to build this, and here's what we're going to do to alleviate any issues that we have when, once we build it. Instead of the, that kind of like, oh, there's no problem. It's not, it's, it's not going to be an issue. It's going to be an issue. It's an issue right now. Um, so, I mean, I think that's where you get the pushback. And it's all cloaked in the environmental reasons that why people are upset at Crystal Springs or Park Preserve. I think that the, 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 the environmental people are obviously the most vocal. And I think most people don't know that these developments are in the hopper. But when they start getting built and you have the commuters who are coming in, they're going to flip out. That when they start paying attention to it, because it, it, even for me, I'm an environmental guy. It comes down to, to traffic. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, it's nasty. And as we see, one accident shuts down, on Forest Drive shuts down Annapolis. Period. All the way over to the Best Gate, um, the whole city stops. Yeah, I mean, Spa all the way down through the Circle, down Taylor, down to Best Gate. No, it's you're right. And um, there are some. And again, this is. It's very easy to say fix it. There are some severe limitations when it comes to alleviating a traffic bottleneck in, in Annapolis. The fact that we have bridges involved and, um, you, you know, I, I mean, I will say if they would open that what, off what, Westmoreland Parkway, um, not Westmoreland, is it uh, Victor Parkway? Yes. Um, behind the giant that that in an accident, you know, you open that up in the case just to move traffic. But I mean, there's a lot of things that can be done, but I'd like to see a plan that says, you know, if you have an accident between Spa and Cherry Grove, this is what you do. This is our plan. If well, there's an accident between Hillsmere and um, Forest Hills, this is what we do. Well, one thing I've always said is, and the answer from Chief Simmons has been, oh, well, you know, in an evacuation, you know, everyone's going out one direction. And my, my thing is like, well, what if a hurricane comes up? What if a tornado? What if, you know, whatever, chemical spill? You know, whatever it is. Uh, he said everything's going out. I said, but is it unreasonable to think that a tree or a telephone pole would not fall? Over Forest Drive. I mean, that's still, you know, right. even though people are, you know, going out, I get that. But when that once that road is blocked, how are you going to move people around? And they have traffic experts working for the, I don't know, for the city, but they, they, at least they commission them. I got to think they do. My God, they've got an arborist. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean I'd love to see. I, look, and you have to come to, to the realization that if you live in Annapolis, that is the big price you pay. I mean, our traffic, I don't think it's any worse than Bethesda or Baltimore or D.C., Matter of fact, you know, we probably have it better in a lot of respects. But if there's an accident, we have it worse than most because we only have one way on and off several peninsulas in town. Well, I'll, t- but I'll you tell have you. To, you have to be, you have to accept that as you live here. Yeah, it sucks. But I mean, that's life at one, some point. One thing for people to bitch about Forest Drive, I will say, and, and I learned this when I had my knee surgery and was doing my follow up with my doctor. You try that Route 3 from 97 down to, you know, past Wog Chapel, the new shopping center, oh, and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, during a, a pseudo rush hour, I've been anywhere from like eight o'clock until about ten o'clock, and it's just a nightmare. Uh, it, it's nothing compared. It's brutal, yeah. Yeah, Forest Drive is nothing compared to that. What do you so, think are the worst intersections in town, just in general? Six sixty five and River Road. Uh, right there, Coons, Coons Ford or whatever that Sheehy, old Sheehy Lexus. Oh, going with, under the underpass? Yeah, with the bridge and the underpass. Um, and that's the most confusing one. I think the one at Riva Road. Oh, because that light, first of all, if you're taking a left onto mm-hmm. 665, that light lasts two seconds. Two seconds? I mean, you get two cars for that. And that yeah. the, th- the three intersections are that one, the one further down that where it intersects West Street, where you can go sort of straight and yeah, you got to take a left to do that. Brutal. Um, I think Taylor and, and Ralph is horrible. That one lasts forever. Yeah. And I also think um, Hilltop and forest uh as far as danger goes because you get a lot oh, of yeah, people well, danger, trying to take that right and two what? people trying to take i asked right. about that when they first i called the city about that because what happens is i don't know why because you you figure most people are locals who are on that but people they have to take a left there onto hilltop when they're going inbound on forest mm-hmm. and all of a sudden they panic and they jump into the lane to go straight on forest so i said why not put a sign ahead you know just the signs over saying you know left turn only that'll alleviate all that and i said nope it right. wasn't even on the table. I don't know why. An overhead sign, over, overhead structure with two, yeah, two signs, that's two signs, you, piece of cake. But it's um, done. that's my problem with uh, with with Crystal Spring is that even if there's no extra traffic, just putting an extra light there is going to fuck everything. That's yeah. that that's my problem with Crystal Spring. Yeah, we'll see. We'll mm. see if it ever if it ever doesn't merit penalties holds out well. Have you heard about Ignite? You want to Ignite Annapolis? I have like, heard about light, Ignite. You want to light it on fire? I have. Uh, matter of fact, I think it was, I don't know if it was Annapolis or it was Baltimore. I, I got really into Ignite. And Ignite is sort of like TED Talky, sort of, where it's... Yeah, TED Talk light. Yeah. It's, um, 
matter of fact, that's how I got to be. I play I'm a Words with Friends Fiend, and there was a guy who did an Ignite on how to win at Scrabble, and it changed my life. My life sucks. Jeez. So it wasn't, <laughs> it, wasn't it, hard. it wasn't hard to do. Yeah, it was just, uh, but uh, yeah, so. Yeah, there's a, uh, a new thing coming out in November. And it's uh, called Ignite Annapolis. Mm. And essentially what it is is you get five minutes, 20 slides that you can provide to tell your message. And you can say whatever it is that you want us to talk about. But the slides are pre-programmed. So you, if you get off track, you're screwed. Yeah, you're screwed. Yeah, so it's, it's sort of like karaoke is that you can't fall behind or you got to stay with it. Yeah, which is kind of neat. But you've got uh, Chris Valerio Shock, who used to be with the... Um, Tech uh, Council. Yeah, the Tech Council. And I think she was with the... Um, uh, Chamber. Chamber of Commerce mm-hmm. before. Um, you've got Liz Thibodeau, who was with Take One Media, and now she's with Quintain Marketing. Kathleen Booth, who's with Quintain Marketing. And Gavin Buckley, who we've talked about a little bit earlier, putting this on together. It's going to be at Maryland Hall on November 30th. I think some of the... So some of the previous topics, just to give you an idea of just how all, all, over, the base, all over the place they are. Lessons from an accidental paddler... Which sounds sexy, actually. Oh, wait, that's no, never mind. Let's, let's think of something else. But then creating super secure passwords that are easy to remember. <laughs> Everything I ever needed to know, I learned from doing triathlons. That's so not me. 100 mistakes I'll try not to make again. 12 hard won lessons of entrepreneurship. What Jimmy Stewart can teach us about the U.S. tech industry. You know, Jimmy Stewart was from Indiana, Pennsylvania. Was he? Indiana, Pennsylvania. That's the Christmas tree capital in the world. I did not know that. Mm hmm. Why learning how to dance will make you a better person, undoing your social training and creative inhibitions in five minutes, and citizens' voices driving federal policy. A dream come true? Question mark. So these are all things they've done before. So they're looking for people to do topics. Right. There's going to be a, a maximum of 16. And if you are interested in submitting a topic, and we'll ask them to see if they can extend this just a couple of days just because we're, we're mentioning it. But October 15th is the deadline, right. which this should be up before then. Yeah. Um, but we'll be cool. we'll beg with them. We'll yeah. beg with them and say, "Hey, look, we'll put a link there. We'll we'll put it in the show notes, right? Uh, to make sure that we can." Uh, and you can send them. An, you can call them at, uh, or you can send them an email and ignite annapolis at gmail dot com. That's ignite annapolis, and that's i g n i t e. They really are cool. You know, I had a friend. Uh, a friend and I were going to do it. Uh, he was obsessed about it for years, and he unfortunately passed over. Well, we would have really had a good time doing this, but. Um, you can do any topic you want. They, they, you give them topic, and they give you topic approval, and you have the the twenty slides, and uh, it's five minutes. But they re- look them up online. Go to YouTube and look up Ignite. And if you like TED Talks, you'll love Ignite. It's kind of the same concept. It is. It's on speed. It's a little bit yeah. A little, a little speed dating meets TED. Well, it's not as meandering. You have to be on point with this. That's on the point. cool thing. Are we gonna do one? I don't know. We should do one. <laughs> like our latest stupid freaking idea. <laughs> It's not <laughs> the Maryland grabs. It's not know? like I have. Yeah, I, I spend um, so much wasted time with my family and doing raising my kids when I should be doing something important. But it will be happening going down on November thirtieth at seven o'clock at Maryland Hall. There will be sixteen presentations, and it will cost to get in. It's one hundred and ninety dollars per person to get. No, it's only five bucks to get in. <laughs> I just checked out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, five bucks to get in uh, at Maryland Hall, and it's uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, if uh, I may, I may go try to do something. Yeah, I'll say about that too. Um, but if I don't, I'll definitely go and uh, watch. And if you go, I'll definitely go and laugh. Uh, well, I was thinking like, maybe we can do how to throw knives. I'm gonna need your help with a couple things there. Okay, that's be awesome. That's cool. Yeah. But uh, so definitely give them a call. In the meantime, or give them an email. In the meantime, uh, shoot us an email at info at the com if you have any uh, show ideas or any topics you'd like to see us cover, or if you have any criticisms or or uh, more to the point, if you have any praise for us to say how awesome we are, um, you can also find us on Twitter at MD Crabs Podcast, uh, and then find us on iTunes. Subscribe there; it just makes your life so much easier if you subscribe to the podcast because every time we release a new one, it'll automatically download to your device. You don't have to worry about anything. And my my goal this week is to figure out how to get that subscribe to iTunes button on our website, which is the MarylandCrabs dot com. It is off. That's my goal for this week. Uh, your goal is to figure out Google. Yeah, yeah, Google, YouTube, <laughs> that's hellish. But uh, maybe you need to buy a Google phone. Maybe it works better if you buy a I'm Google a phone. I'm Apple dude. It's, <laughs> and then um, uh, Facebook page and Facebook group. Join them both. 
Uh, and then on Twitter, you can find uh, John at I in Annapolis and me at Tim Hamilton 47. And you can friend us both on Facebook. We're, right. we, we like our yeah. friends. Um, but to go back and listen, check out some of the other ones. We're, we're starting to get a stable of episodes in. This is six um, right now. Yeah, we had our um, you know our first introduction there. Then we just sort of rambled on about crime. Yep. Uh, you and I. And then we talked to Robert Eads, who was great. Was, was awesome. We talked to Jessica Backler. In, in Eastport. Who's living right on the, on the fringe of public housing. And we got into business with Sean O'Neill. We got into business and beers. Yeah, we were drinking. We got to do more of those. Yeah. I like drinking. Anywho. Um, so that's about it for this week. Uh, we'll have another one coming out next week. We've got some live events coming up, so stay tuned. Um, again, Facebook, that's where we're going to let you know what everything is coming up and what everything is happening. So uh, join us. Yeah, and go check out Scott McMullen on the Annapolis Podcast and listen to that episode with Ralph Crosby. Yeah, it was good. Fascinating guy. Fascinating so. guy. So until then, uh, we'll see you. Later. Bye. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.